Dear students, good morning. Welcome to our politics class. Today we are continue the chapter Understanding Marginalization. Now we will discuss about minorities and marginalization. In unit 1 we have read that the constitution provides safeguards to religious and linguistic minorities as part of our fundamental rights. So, what do you understand by the term minority? The term minority is most commonly used to refer to communities that are numerically small in relation to the rest of the population. That means a section of group of people which are less than 50% of total population in a particular region with less social, political, economic and cultural impact in society and are dominated by majority. Okay? However, it is a concept that goes well beyond numbers. It encompasses issues of power, access to resources and has social and cultural dimensions. We know that the Indian constitution recognized that the culture of the majority influences the way in which society and government might express themselves. In such cases, size can be disadvantaged and lead to the marginalization of the relatively smaller communities. Thus, the constitution provides the safeguards. Okay? Safeguards are needed to protect minority communities against the possibility of being culturally dominated by the majority. Okay? They also protect them against any discrimination and disadvantage that they may face. So, problems faced by minority community. Okay. Then problem of uh, security. Then problem of uh, relating to equity. Then problem of being deprived. Then problem of psychological insecurity. And a uh, problem of identity. Given certain conditions, communities that are small in number relative to the rest of society may feel insecure about their lives, assets and well-being. This sense of insecurity may get accentuated or more pointed okay, if the relations between the minority and majority communities are fraught. The constitution provides these safeguards because it is committed to protecting India's cultural diversity and promoting equality as well as justice. Okay? We have already learned in previous chapter, the judiciary plays a crucial role in upholding the law and enforcing fundamental rights. Every citizen of India can approach the courts if they believe that their fundamental rights have been violated. Okay? So, the fun, protecting fundamental rights and laws for marginalized we will discuss in the next chapter. Okay. Deep discuss in the next chapter. Now let us discuss understand marginalization of the Muslim community. Muslims and marginalization. According to 2001 census. Muslims are 13.4% of India's population. It is not that. According to 2001 census, Muslims are 13.4% of India's population. Okay. And are considered to be marginalized community in India today because in comparison to other communities, they have over the years been deprived of the benefits of socio-economic development. So, let's see. First table. Do Muslims have the equal access to basic amenities? Then, kacha houses, electricity, piped water. Okay. Then, next table. Which religious group has the lowest literacy rate in 2001? Literacy rate by religion. Okay. Then, 65 percentage of all. Then, all communities. Then, 65 percentage of Hindus. Then for 59 percentage of Muslims, 80 percentage of Christians, 70 percentage of Sikhs, 73 percentage of Buddhists, 
94% of Jains. Okay. Let's see table 3. Then what do these figures convey? Then the, that is uh, public employment of Muslims. Population, central public sector unit and state public sector unit. Okay, this one. Recognizing that Muslims in India were lagging behind in terms of various development indicators, the government set up a high-level committee in 2005. Chaired by Justice Dejinder Satcha, the committee examined the social, economic and educational status of the Muslim community in India. Okay, Satchar committee report on social, economic and educational status of the Muslim community of India. The report discusses in detail the marginalization of this community. It suggests that on range of social, economic and educational indicators, the situation of the Muslim community is comparable to that of other marginalized communities. Like what? Then scheduled castes and scheduled tribes, SC and ST. Okay? For example, according to the report, the average years of schooling for Muslim children between the age of 7, 16, 7 to 16, okay, is much lower than that of other socio-religious communities. Rejinder Sachar submitting the report. Educational conditions of Indian Muslims were data analyzed have been obtained from census 2001. The literacy rates among Muslims in 2001 were below national average. Okay. The gap between Muslim and general literacy rates are higher in urban areas and among women. In rural areas, both Muslims and non-Muslims are illiterate. Okay. Muslims' literacy rates are much lower than general and other minorities but almost equal to SC or ST. Okay. Scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. Economic and social marginalization experienced by Muslims has other dimensions as well. Okay. Like other minorities, Muslim customs and practices are sometimes quite distinct from what is seen as the mainstream. Some, not all, Muslims may wear a burqa, sport a long beard, wear a fuss, and these become ways to identify all Muslims. Why? Because of this, they tend to be identified differently and some people think they are not like the rest of us. Okay? Often this becomes an excuse to treat them unfairly and discriminate against them. Let's see, Muslim women are an important part of the women's movement in India. So, the social marginalization of Muslims in some instances has led to them migrating from places where they have lived, okay, often leading to the ghettoization of the community. Sometimes this prejudice leads to hatred and violence, okay. Uh, that means a ghetto is an area or locality that is populated largely by members of a particular community, okay. Therefore, a process that leads to such a situation, this may occur due to various social, cultural and economic reasons. In the above section of this chapter, we saw how in the case of the Muslim community, there is a link between economic and social marginalization. Okay, please note that the Muslim community, there is a link between economic and social marginalization. We have learned about the situation of Adivasis. Okay, we know that. Then... The experience of all these groups point to the fact that marginalization is a complex phenomenon requiring a variety of strategies, measures and safeguards to redress this situation. All of us have a stake in protecting the rights defined in the constitution and the laws and policies framed to realize these rights. Okay, laws, laws and policies. Okay, without these we will never be able to protect the diversity that makes our country unique nor realize the state's commitment to promote equality for all. So we conclude that we have tried to understand what it means to be a marginalized community. We have tried to look at these 
through the experiences of different marginalized communities there are different reasons for each of these communities being marginalized each experiences marginalization in different ways we have also seen that marginalization is linked to experiencing disadvantage prejudice and powerlessness okay let's see the sachar committee report also disprove other prevalent myths about muslims it is commonly believed that the muslims prefer to send their children to madrasas the figure show that only 4% of muslim children are in madrasas whereas 66% attend government schools and 30% private schools okay marginalization results in having a low social status and not having equal access to education and other resources okay in india there are several more marginalized communities like delhis okay so then we will read more in the next chapter okay uh, how different groups have confronted marginalization dear students this chapter completed you must read the lesson carefully okay thank you